Good morning. Thank you very much for coming. Many of you I know have come a long, long way. Spoke to several before. Your sons and daughters have, have shown up. Uh, I felt like I came a long way. Sat on the George Washington Bridge this morning for an hour and a half, but I think I've done that for the last 20 odd years. But I've met people here already who've come from Canada, France, the Far East, India, that come a long way. Some of you may know an author by the name of Matt Ridley. Uh, Matt recently wrote a book called Rational Optimism, How Wealthy Buys. But you may have read an essay he wrote in Wall Street Journal a couple weeks ago. And his point was, you know, it was called Why Humans Triumph. Why have all the species in this world or human beings raised to the top? And first he said, is it because of our intellect? Is it because of all the skill sets we develop? His answer is really no. He, he broke it down early on to what he called trade. But what he used the term trade was cultural exchange, intellectual information exchange that made us different. And he said that this eventually became centralized in institutions such as Columbia University. And he said over time, what happens is this cultural exchange, this accumulation of information going back and forth, creates innovation, innovation in many fields. Now we happen to be in the field of dentistry, but he said if you actually sit down and you think about it, and he says you take a pen out of your pocket, no individual actually invented the pen from start to finish, meaning figured out how to make the ink, how to put it into the pen, how to take the pen to a store, how to deliver the pen to you, and so on and so forth, even how to basically use it in day-to-day -day life. Think about your iPods you all have, your iPhones everyone has. Even though Stephen Jobs is considered a genius, he alone is not the developer of that. Based on cumulative cultural exchange. Then he says the next thing is, over time what we wind up doing is we create specialization. We narrow our focus. We create more information by becoming very, very narrow about what we do. But we need places to do that, and this is what you are all about. You all came to Columbia one way or the other. You found your way here to develop a specialization, to become very, very narrow in your skill sets. Now, sometimes people say, well, that's bad. Well, he said the upside, though, is is that when groups of specialists come together and you become very narrow and focused, but yet you buy information from each other, you exchange. Parents, friends, look at the size of this group. There are about 60 people here. Think about the dynamic exchange that your sons and daughters have had at Columbia Dental School for the last two, three, four, six years. It becomes remarkable. And so basically we're here today to honor their A, dedication to their specialization, B, that broad exchange of information, orthodontist learning from periodontist, periodontist learning from endodontist. So today also, parents, relatives, friends, significant others, to show you the importance of this, what it means to this dental school, okay, you can see we have 17 people up on this dais, all to help in this celebration. Start out with our Dean, Dean Ira Lamster, followed by Dr. Mary Munger. She's the Centennial Professor in Health Policy and the Dean of the School of Nursing. Once again, we have the Dean of the School of Nursing here celebrating postgraduate education at the dental school. Uh, Dr. Salentine, who you'll meet later on, our Vice Dean. We have uh, our university chaplain, Reverend Davis. Next to her, we have Dr. Charles Solomon. He's the interim director of the Division of Endodontics. Next to him is the program director of endodontics, Dr. Gunnar Hasselkren. Then from orthodontics, we have Dr. Thomas Cangelosi. He's the WA professor and chairman also of the section of growth and development. Next to him, we have Margarita Santoro, the program director. Then we have the professor and chair of the section of oral and diagnostic sciences, Dr. Papapano, and he's also the 
Division Director of uh, Periodontics. Next to him, we have a prosthodontist, the director, Shelby White. Next to him, Phil Terman, who's the Director of Advanced Education and General Dentistry Program. Dr. Stephen Chusset is our Director of Pediatric Dentistry, and with him is his Program Director, Dr. Richard Yoon. Uh, Dr. Uh, David Zagarelli is the Professor Director of the Division of Oral Pathology. And finally, next to him is Dr. Sidney Isaac, who is the Gutman uh, Professor of Clinical Cranial Facial Surgery and the Director of Oral Maxillofacial Surgery. So once again, a distinguished panel to help in this celebration. When people ask me about the overall university itself, one of the things that I always state is that the next individual who's been with this university for over 15 years is one of the reasons you really want to come here. Okay, I think she, she's in, been a wonderful chaplain for this institution and for our invocation, I think we're extremely fortunate to have Reverend Davis. It's always such a pleasure to join with the College of Dental Medicine. This ends my commencement season for this year, and, and I so enjoy the opportunity to be with such a wonderful group of, of people. Hear these words. Oral health and dentistry are critical aspects of healthcare in this country and around the world. Your specialized training, research skills, and diagnostic expertise put you at the center of some of the most important health concerns of many children, men, and women today. You will not only work to close the gap in oral health disparities, you will give early warnings of serious chronic and systemic health conditions. The impact of your work will, your, that your work will have on the quality of life for women and men, children and elderly is significant and in some cases life-saving. May God grant each of you the courage and the humility to be humane partners in health management, gentle and compassionate healers. May God's mercy empower you to be generous listeners, wise practitioners, and patient researchers. May each of you be blessed with a curious mind, good humor, and a peaceful spirit. May it be so. May it be so with God's help. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Davis. I would now like to have uh, Dean Ira Lampster come and start our ceremony. Thank you, Jim, uh, and good morning to you all. I certainly want to welcome all of you here today uh, to this graduation ceremony for our postdoctoral uh, students and residency programs for 2010. As you heard, this is the last event of our commencement season, and for many of you, it marks the end of your formal education. As we all know, education continue at, continues throughout life, but some of you may actually have to join the workforce. These postdoctoral and residency programs are an essential part of the educational mission of the Columbia University College of Dental Medicine, and they are among the best of their kind in the nation. Entry criteria into these programs is really quite competitive, and the alumni have a terrific sense of camaraderie and shared experience. Furthermore, many of the graduates of these programs have been and continue to be leaders in the profession. A number of these programs have been in existence for many decades. In fact, orthodontics for more than 85 years, periodontics for more than 60 years, and endodontics for more than 40 years. That history certainly emphasizes the fact that these programs have helped shape the College of Dental Medicine. As dental specialists and well-trained generalists, you enter the profession at certainly an interesting and challenging time. Despite the economy, the opportunities remain outstanding. There also is a new focus on the importance of oral health as part of primary health, and new diagnostic and treatment approaches are routinely being introduced. I only need to point out how osseointegrated implants have changed this profession during the last 20 years, and how now the focus on the relationship of oral inflammation to systemic diseases continues to ask, cause us to ask, how does dental medicine fit into the larger healthcare system? As you enter the next phase of your professional lives, there will be many pulls on your time. But remember that you have a responsibility to the profession and to your patients 
to be part of the change process, and change occurs constantly. Further, do not forget your families and your loved ones. Achieving a balance between the professional and the personal will be a constant struggle for all of you. You will work hard, but I, I urge you to find time for rest and relaxation. Today is a time for celebration and acknowledgement of what each of you has accomplished. My congratulations to you and your families, and on behalf of the College of Dental Med Medicine, I wish you a most successful future. In addition to my opening remarks, I have the opportunity to introduce today's guest speaker. Traditionally, what we've done is ask a leader from the Columbia University Medical Center, who is not a member of the dental profession, to speak to our graduates uh, and impart some important words. And today, we've invited Dr. Mary O'Neill Mundinger uh, to be that uh, commencement speaker. Dr. Mundinger, as you heard, is the Centennial Professor in Health Policy and Dean of the Columbia University School of Nursing. She is an elected member of the Institute of Medicine, the American Academy of Nursing, and the New York Academy of Medicine. She is the founder of the Columbia Advanced Practice Nurse Associates, the first nursing school faculty practice where nurse practitioners help commercial managed care contracts and are compensated at the same rate as primary care physicians. Recently, she established the first Doctor of Nursing Practice degree in the United States. And in 1998, she was named the Nurse Practitioner of the Year by the Nurse Practitioner of the American Journal of Primary Healthcare. In 1984, 1985, Dr. Mundinger served as a Robert Wood Johnson Health Policy Fellow in the office of Senator Edward Kennedy, a person she maintained a relationship with until his death. In 1996, 1996 excuse me, she was awarded a Doctor of Humane Letters from Hamilton College. She is a noted expert on health policy and known primarily for her work on workforce issues and primary care. I'm really very pleased to introduce Dr. Mary Mundinger. Good morning. I'd like to offer my congratulations to each of you on your magnificent accomplishments. This is a day unlike your first professional degree attainment, and one that marks your achievement of extraordinary competence and provides a new swelling of pride among those who love you and guided you toward this day. It is a day of great joy for them and for you. In these brief moments before you share this day with your family and friends, I would like to convey to you three perceptions about you and your careers. First, you have reached a pinnacle of education and confidence that few can reach. Celebrate wildly, then get down to work. Those following your progress are not expecting you to only sustain the practice protocols you learned in your residency. They are glancing up from evaluating your progress on those tasks to see how you are using your training. Are you fully utilizing what you learned are you in a set path, or are you breaking new ground? What does your practice entail? How are your patients faring? How are you faring in your profession and in your communities? As a person 50 years in her profession and half that time as a dean, I can tell you with some confidence that your contributions will and must be far greater than excelling at the status quo already established in your specialty regardless of how valuable that specialty and that status quo are today. But first, you must season yourself in your new roles. Maintain your student approach of inquiry and confirmation as you gain ever more confidence in your decisions and in your skills. Seek guidance and ask for assistance. You are not a finished product. The luster of who you will become is dependent on these early days of a continued search for proof that you are mastering your craft. Second, meet your obligation to build new, improved practice protocols. As a clinical professional, you already know the value of utilizing evidence in your practice. Now your task is to expand on that and begin the thoughtful, carefully designed, meticulous process of building new science as your field expands and changes. This will require partnerships between practice and research. 
You must begin those partnerships early and make them part of the fabric of your work. Your rare and precious clinical gift to this partnership will be your observations, your analysis, the aha moment when you begin to see similarities in how your patients respond to care or develop ideas based on clinical problems with a common theme. You will be the one in such a partnership to guide the path of new inquiry based on evidence. This is how a profession matures and it advances. Your clinical acumen and your research partnerships are crucial to that dynamic. Lastly, your generation, as in all clinical professions, more than those of the past, understand the importance of breaking down conventional scope of practice firewalls. Illness and disease know no such boundaries, and the needs of individuals require that the clinician caring for them can think beyond the traditional barriers of practice. This is not an invitation to be cowboys or cowgirls in your approach, nor should any clinician act outside the limits of one's tested competence. However, this is an invitation to consider how your profession should break out of the bounds of oral health and oral disease. As a nurse, I know that systemic illness and disease can sometimes be identified through the eyes and hands of you and your colleagues. With a current and drastically worsening shortage of primary care clinicians, why shouldn't some in your profession gain the added authority and advance patient access to care in this medical specialty of primary care? Of the observations I have shared with you about your career progression, it is this third one that is so germane to why your dean asked me to join you here today. Ira is a proponent of all three of these observations. He has been a stealth advocate with a direct voice. He has a plan, and the steps toward that plan are transparent. The goal, however, is a little foggier in the public eye. Are you really going to be a central part of the conventional medical establishment? If not, why change the name of your school to include the word medicine? What an extraordinary leap of expectation this signals to its graduates. Ira not only espouses these goals, he lives them. He is a scientist who knows the political process necessary for change, and he believes that you can be the instruments of change. I have consciously not used the name of your profession in my remarks today. This is not because I believe your profession, like nursing in the past, has not been inadequately recognized, but rather because I believe your work will, will far exceed the traditional expectations of the graduates and the professional titles of those who preceded you. This is simply a call to arms from one of your nursing colleagues. Be all you can be, and congratulations. Thank you, Dean, for those wonderful remarks. If, if you look around right now, you'll, and, and you're not familiar with people at this institution, uh, your, your sons and daughters can point out that many of the staff and administration have basically come down out of their clinical areas and everything to help in this graduation and everything. And I think what that points out is the quality of our, both our staff and their dedication to, to this institution and our residents and our postdocs, all right, that, that we're all willing to gather on, on this special day. So I applaud our staff out there today. For, thank you for coming down. Well, I know everyone's saying enough, enough talking, enough speaking, right, Dr. Lichtenthal? Let's move this along. Okay, even though if you were here, we, you know. <laughs> Probably one of the most uh, beloved program directors over the 20 years that I've seen, because his residents always seem to cry uh, when, he, when he does the introductions, is Dr. Gunnar Hasselgren for Certificate in Endodontics. Dr. Hasselgren? Good morning. This is a day of celebration. 
So congratulations to all graduates and to your families and loved ones who have supported you. We have in endodontics a fantastic class. A class that has gone through obstacles that no other class. And many more obstacles have been thrown at them than any other class, but they've handled it well and handled it with grace. And may I ask you to come up one at a time in alphabetical order. We have first Dr. Jordana Fleischer, who originally came from Penn. We have Dr. Marshandani from Syria, <coughs> who is not here because of his mother's demise, unfortunately. We have Dr. Khalil Khani, who just arrived because of traffic, I assume. <laughs> He's originally from Iran, where he was already an endodontist, but he wanted to go deeper into our field. We have Dr. Jay O, who is a Columbia product. We have Dr. Tai Pham, who has a past at Columbia as a PhD in pharmacology. And via UMDNJ in New Jersey, he came here. And we have Dr. <laughs> Toshinori Tamaka from Japan. Many will not recognize him without his camera, but he's here. So congratulations to all of you. One of the time-honored traditions um, here is that we have a, usually have one of the residents come up and make a few closing remarks for their discipline. Who's, who's the resident? All right, come here. Where's she going? The script is, did you write that script, Noir? It's in French, if you better. There's a story of a young dentist that just started his own clinic. He rented a beautiful office and had it furnished with antiques, someone's paying attention, <laughs> paintings, and a waiting room full of magazines. He sat hour after hour on opening day, hoping for someone to come by for treatment. After some time, he saw a man approaching the office. Wishing to appear busy, the new dentist picked up the phone and pretended he was giving an appointment. Finally, he hung up and turned to the visitor who was waiting behind the desk. Can I help you, asked the dentist. Yes, the man replied. I've come to activate the phone line. <laughs> well, this may be where we're heading soon. <laughs> there are definite challenges that lie ahead, and getting started in the endo business may be daunting at first. But our time here has given us a good springboard from which we will all hopefully enjoy wonderful careers in what I consider to be the best specialty. Sorry, guys. <laughs> good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome all the friends and family members who've come from all over to celebrate this exciting day with us. Unfortunately, one of our co-residents is not able to be here today. Ehem Mashadani lost his mother this week and is home in Syria with his family. We send him our deepest condolences and wish that he could be here with us on this special day. I would now like to thank our chairman, Dr. Solomon, who has joined us this past year. He has been a dedicated individual who strives to enhance our endodontic program here at Columbia by bringing energy and enthusiasm to the task. Dr. Solomon, it's my honor today to present you this gift as a token of our appreciation.
Jay has it for him. We would like to thank our program director, Dr. Hasselgren, very much for all of his help and all the faculty members who have been there to guide us along the way with advice, knowledge, and experience. As we close this chapter in our lives, we look forward to joining all of you as colleagues in the world of endodontics. Special round of applause for Dr. Hasselgren. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie, and I hope you're here, <laughs> for being an awesome assistant and making the residents and all the other departments jealous. Muhammad, we thank you, and we're really glad you were able to join us this year and appreciate all your hard work, and hope you're here too. And thanks to the front desk for all your help. Mira, Denise, we will miss you. <laughs> I was told to keep my speech under three minutes, so I had to keep it short or speak fast, so I'm going with the former. I'd like to congratulate my co-residents in Endo and all my, all my fellow residents in the other specialty departments as well. I wish all of you the best of luck wherever your paths may lead. It was a pleasure working with all of you, and I hope the relationships we've established here continue on past these days here at Columbia. Thank you. Thank you, Endo. Our, our next group is for the Masters in Orthodontics. Their program director, Dr. Santoro, is one of the hardest working program directors I know. Um, she, she's always, always on, yeah, you know, she's looking, she's always on the go. Dr. Santoro, please come up and present. Thank you, Jim. Good morning, everyone. I expect big cheers from my students when they come up. And uh, please uh, help me welcome them. And I invite them one, to, uh, one by one to join us on the uh, stage, starting with uh, Kalim Husseini. Kalim fully deserves all the cheers and much more. He joined us from the dental school at Virginia University, has a background in biomedical engineering. He actually turned down a secure admission to another program to take a chance to match at Columbia University. And we are fortunate he did. He has been a true asset for us. The joke among the faculty is that, is that now that we have a fully digital clinic, we should also acquire a cloning device to keep a double Kalim in each class. An impeccable class president. His input has been invaluable to promote improvements in our programs. He's an exceptional clinician, intelligent researcher, friendly and supportive classmate. And in difficult situation, he has the aplomb of James Bond. He will, he will relocate to Washington DC after graduation. We are glad he's not moving too far. Kalim, I would like to personally thank you for your help. It has been a privilege to work with you. <laughs> Jeffrey Leon. Jeffrey joined us from UCSF, and during dental school, he had participated in laboratory research on the apoptosis of periodontal ligament cells. A truly creative Californian personality, after he joined our program, he quickly adapted to the uptight East Coast cultural standards, and eventually changed his original hairstyle to a more conservative one. Jeffrey, we still have the original pictures. Jeffrey has an engaging personality, always wears a smile in the clinic, and makes every effort to blend in the environment. I sometimes hear his voice during lectures mumbling at the back of the classroom. I'm sure one day he will reveal his real thoughts on biomechanics. Congratulations, Jeffrey. <laughs> Sylvia Lin. Sylvia is originally from Taiwan, now a Long Island resident. She's a graduate of, Columbia Den of the Columbia Dental Program, where she collected an impressive series of honors. She came with the strongest recommendation from our Columbia faculty, especially by the maxillofacial surgeons. In fact, after gaining enough exposure to the surgical field, Sylvia made a smart choice. I'm sorry, Sid. Uh, because very smart she is. Her research on the skeletal effect of pa rapid palatal expansion could truly modify the way orthodontists practice. And besides that, Sylvia has maintained a challenging patient pool, managing numerous complex craniofacial patients. 
She is considered quiet, efficient, and a very sincere and honest person. Sylvia, congratulations. <laughs> Tiffany Madison Christensen. Tiffany also deserves all the cheers. A Columbia Dental grad as well. With an extensive collection of honor grades, she truly impressed the orthodontic faculty during her undergraduate rotations and aced the interview. An efficient class co-president, along with Kalim, Tiffany is a go-getter, multitasking, overachieving, clinically and academically, and would never appear stressed because Tiffany is the queen of cool. Involved in a variety of students' organizations and very gregarious, she has been the official tour guide for dental school applicants in the past three years. While managing a very intense clinical schedule, she also found the time and energy to teach the Columbia Dental students during the evening clinics. Her vacation time went to organize weddings, her own wedding, and into being a bridesmaid in friends and family weddings. I can easily imagine her baking a cake in the office in between seeing patients and making phone calls to the stockbroker. <laughs> Tiffany is planning to practice in New York City. We are eager to hear of her successful future career. Congratulations. <laughs> Giselle Tobibian. Giselle joined our programs from UCLA Dental School, where she also worked in pharmacology and psychology research investigating cognitive development. She moved to the East Coast to pursue her dental degree at Harvard. She sets very high standards for herself, investing time and resources in achieving them and enjoys the challenge. A very inquisitive person. With her attention to detail, she can provide surprisingly complex answers to apparently simple questions. One can certainly say that she has an orthodontic personality. Giselle is still undecided about her future whereabouts and, may, and maybe go back to the Golden Coast of California, but with her impeccable chairside manners and friendliness, we have no doubts that she will succeed anywhere she decides to be. Congratulations. <laughs> Stephanie Su. Originally from Taiwan, after graduating from Berkeley in San Francisco, Stephanie moved to Harvard to complete her dental degree. While at Harvard, she did research on vascular and smooth muscle cell uh, proliferation, and her supervising faculty members were so sorry to see her leave, but Boston was too small for a creative thinker like Stephanie. It does not take too many words for her to clearly convey the message she plans to deliver, and one can be sure that she has carefully pondered the answers and has eliminated all unnecessary and cumbersome flourishing. Stephanie has a true scientific mind, she's honest and candid, with superb work ethics, she pursues clinical excellence but always prioritizing the patient's interest and is one student faculty could trust to work with minimal supervision. Congratulations, Stephanie. Well done. <laughs> Bo Yun. Bo is a Columbia Dental graduate with the strongest recommendations as well by faculty. She participated in microbiology research on periodontal pathogens. Then she decided to gain experience in private practice for a few years before applying to orthodontic programs. Bo is an excellent and scrupulous clinician with a quiet demeanor, soft spoken, caring, and gentle. She's a lady. Even the most difficult patients end up mellowing under her care. Bo has a solid common sense. She's well organized, a truly hard worker, easily accepts constructive criticism. She has managed three years in a busy specialty program while nurturing a young child and a husband, and has one more child due shortly. We are trying not to apply too much stress emotional on her. These past three days, we're not equipped for perinatal care, but with her quiet demeanor, Bo can really manage overload. We have ample confidence in her future professional achievements. Her patients will be lucky indeed. Congratulations, Lady Bo. <laughs> well, class of 2010, you have set a template for excellence and passion for your specialty. They will be an example for many years to come. I hope you enjoyed your tenure here at Columbia as much as we enjoyed working with you. You will be truly missed, and best of luck to you all. I will now call Dr. Cangelosi for the distribution of the interviews. I will invite now no, the no,
Now I will invite two of my students for a very, very brief speech, and the two uh, class presidents will actually co-share the uh, speech. So this might be a little less brief than some of them we were told, <laughs> but anyway. Um, Dean Lampstart, Drs. Cangelosi and Santoro, faculty, dear family and friends, we are honored to address you on behalf of our class. One of the first things Dr. Maestral taught us was about Australian wires. They're resilient and have the property of maintaining their integrity, even when subjected to forces and loads. We certainly have tried to be Australian these past few years when faced with both expected and unexpected challenges. We are inordinately grateful for our experience at Columbia and are amazed at how quickly three years vanished. Those fateful few months are luckily a distant memory. Doctors Cangelosi and Santoro, we really thought you were trying to get rid of us right from the start. Not only were our fingers blistered from wire bending, but we were sitting in a room with a thermometer reading 50 degrees with the noise of construction outside our window. But we learned to toughen up our resilience, at times surprising even to us. We were able to fully immerse ourselves in orthodontics in and out of the clinic. We feel privileged and fortunate to be the last class to learn tip edge clinically from Dr. Maestral, to learn the intricacies of ODTP from Dr. Yuan, and to enjoy the tranquility of literature review with Dr. Stradiatus before her wonderful retirement to Greece. While we were saddened by the loss of some of the members of our Columbia family, we are grateful for the hard work of Dr. Santoro, Siegel, Leifert, Anstending, and all other faculty who helped us to regain our strength at a challenging time. You have made each one of our experiences more fulfilling and beneficial. Of course, we must thank Dr. Cangelosi for keeping the department functional during this time. Dr. Cangelosi, you have been the light and guidance of our program for 20 years. You have influenced numerous generations of orthodontists and the program will certainly miss you and your leadership as you step down as chair of the department. We also have a lot of other people to thank for, for helping us along the way. Um, our hygienist, April, our assistants, who numerous of them who have helped us along our journey, Elsa, Judy, Carmen, Mindy, and Ayana, um, who has been with us at the end, and two that have been with us the whole time up there, Jomaris, Mira, and Lily. Let me tell you something, Lil. Uh, <laughs> you guys have all been great. Uh, we're really going to miss you guys. Thanks for being patient with us, especially at the end when things get crazy every year. Um, our front desk staff, Mr. Tom Cologne, I'm not sure if you're here, but you've done an amazing job. And all the ladies in the front, Carmen Bonilla, Yolette, Denise, Natasha, Jeanette, Marlene, Ethel, who we hope you're enjoying your retirement, and Jessica, my best patient, keep wearing your retainers. Um, big thank you to all you guys. Um, IMS and everybody else who keeps the clinic functional. Our department administration, Mary and Rachel, I think I saw upstairs. Um, you two have been absolutely amazing. Thank you for looking out for us, being patient with us, and supporting us. And anybody else we have forgotten, I'm sorry, but we owe you guys a lot of thanks. And we can't forget our family and friends. Um, we have today our parents, spouses, siblings, in-laws, and even our class daughter, Dana, she's sitting over there, um, a lot of whom have flown from all over the country to be with us today. We're happy to be able to share our special moments today with you. It's been a long road for all of us. Thank you for supporting us emotionally and definitely financially. We're a lot poorer now than we started. We wouldn't be who we are today if it wasn't for you guys, and we're only standing here today at our academic pinnacle because of your love and devotion through the years, and all of our friends and co-residents, who we appreciate your companionship you've provided. Uh, we've been through many transitions with the program and are appreciative to all those who have reworked details for us and stepped up to fill bigger shoes when external forces were seemingly unbearable. Through this, we experienced how the Columbia family relies on each of its members and learned how to be a family within our own class. We learned to rely on each other, not only as chair, partner and chair partners and clinical colleagues who shared orthodontic thoughts, but also as sanity systems for board studying, as travel buddies, and as advice givers for life's major events. As we graduate, each of us is reminded daily of what we will miss, the personality quirks and support of our classmates and all the great times we shared together. So we just want to say a little thing about each of our classmates. So we'll start with Bo. Bo, the quietest among us, yet the most generous and giving in heart. We're so happy you were brought into our lives and brought Dana and Sung with you. We look forward to meeting your new little girl in two months. We are positive she will be as adorable and full of personality as Dana and as kind and wonderful as her super mommy. Giselle, our self-appointed social chair. 
Our entire close class owes you a lot for being sort of a punching bag and taking a lot of blows that were given out. We knew we can always rely on your patients and their numerous broken brackets for uh, comic relief when stressful times in clinic. Your generosity and willingness to organize birthday get-togethers and other social activities has been instrumental in keeping us together as a class, and we thank you for that. Sylvia, perfect in every way, literally. Who knew you'd even be perfect and hit the bullseye your first time with a dart ever in your hand? Your precision, brilliance, and willingness to help never ceases to amaze me. It has been a pleasure to spend dental school and residency with you, even if I may have scared you a little bit at times with my yelling. We look forward to watching your perfection evolve into practice life and beyond. Steph, you certainly have a lot of competitive, competitiveness packed into your small frame. Your love of sports has been a welcome relief for Jeff and me in a class flowing with estrogen. I'm not sure how you put up with Jeff for three years, though, but I'm so glad it wasn't me that had to do it. Your caring personality and selflessness was a much needed calming presence during the craziness at the end and during the job hunt process. We wish you the best with your new job in Jersey, even though you don't fit the bill of a Jerseyite at all. Jeff, even though you're the class clown, some of our most prominent memories of you ironically have been while you're asleep, our only quiet time of the day. <laughs> However, our days, especially Lily's, wouldn't have been the same without your loud voice, blatant honesty, and constant smile. We're so happy you brought JoJo to our coast and into our lives, even if she did expand our waistlines a little bit with her delicious cookies. We know your personality will lead you to only to great things back in California, and we look forward to you sharing them all with us. Tiffany, oh. my partner in crime today and throughout the three years as co-president of this class, she's always been the emotional one of the class. Uh, she almost made it all the way through six weeks of wire bending, but alas, she broke down the second to last day along with her typodont. She's the queen of post-its, as I've found always at least 10 lying around her cabinets on a daily basis, not to mention the two or three she always carries around in her phone. And then I can say a lot about her clumsiness, but um, I'll just mention it here instead of going into details. But in all seriousness, you've been a great leader, organizer, and spokesperson for the class. I'm not sure how I got to be the one that was fortunate enough to have had you in my bay for two years and as my chair partner this past year, but I'm truly grateful for it. My experience at Columbia would not have been the same without you. And even beyond clinic, it was absolutely delightful getting to know you better as the person that you are. Thank you for putting up with me and being a great friend. I'll miss you. Okay, and now I have to try to get through his, so. Colleen, you're probably one of the smartest people I know. I admire your attention to every detail, perhaps even semi-OCD. Lucky Sarah. Does four Oreo cookies and a glass of milk at exactly the same time every night ring a bell? You have been an amazing example for all of us to follow in the clinic. I am confident that your successes with Sarah and Virginia will be numerous, and I can't wait to see them unfold. However, brilliance aside, I most admire your attention to detail in your relationships. It was a quick transition for us from classmates who sat across from each other, reading each other's thoughts through mass faces, to study partners, texting buddies, life coaches, orthodontic husband and wife, no offense to Sarah or Evan, but most importantly, to the best of friends. You've helped me in so many ways, technologically, following in true Indian tradition, academically and emotionally. You get me and all of my faces, and there's no one I rather or could have spent the past three years with. I'll miss you incredibly, but I know with every piercing beep of my phone throughout each day, I will look forward to words of encouragement, questions, and updates from you. So. This fabulous group is ready. We are eager to take the next step in our orthodontic careers. Unfortunately, we find ourselves in a difficult position due to the current economic climate, as job opportunities aren't exactly what we had hoped for and imagined. But this is just one more challenge in our path. We remain optimistic for the future, knowing that we have been well-educated and have a support system behind us. Even though none of us individually were like those Australian wires we wanted to be, our shared experiences are what helped us to maintain integrity, become resilient, and prepared us to face the challenges ahead. We'll soon be going our separate ways around the nation, but we'll take a piece of each of our classmates and experiences with us as our strength. I think orthodontic tooth movement's a little faster than that, but that's, that's all right. <laughs> I think we already, re, 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 we had relapse already. <laughs> oh. 
Marguerite, that's a little ortho humor, okay? <laughs> I do perio humor better, but that's for another night. <laughs> I forgot we had a perio program. <laughs> I, I need Dr. Papapano's help so he can come up with me and we'll give out the certificates. <laughs> We, we have two uh, residents who are going to receive a Master's of Science in Periodontics, uh, Dr. Karen MD. <laughs> Karen, uh, we have a national examination every year, and, and she's one of the top scorers throughout the whole country consistently over the last three years. <laughs> Julie Lemur, also receiving our MS. Every, every year, I ask some resident to become an expert in a small little niche, and Julie took on microscopic surgery for us and has done a couple of fantastic presentations. We have three certificate uh, recipients, Dr. John Choi, who received his dental degree from CDM. John uh, volunteered several times to do uh, our grand rounds, our evening grand rounds. The next one is Dr. Chayton Patel. Chayton came here with a PhD. <laughs> Chayton was great on organization. He's a natural entrepreneur, and he never lets me forget that he has a PhD. <laughs> Noir Touchan. Noir's brother's an oral maxillofacial surgeon. He resisted that urge, and I'm glad that he did. And he desired to become a periodontist. Is your brother over there? Yes. Sorry, Doc. <laughs> you couldn't ask for any, any time I needed something done, any help for any assignment, Noir was always there. So as a group, they're, they're one of the best. You spend, as a program director, you spend more time with your residents, right, Dr. Isaac, than your own family. So, well worth it. Julie Lemure, right? You have been voted the, the speaker? Okay. Bonjour. Uh, <laughs> nous voudrions remercier nos familles d'être venues aujourd'hui. Um, I'm sorry. Um, just in case you haven't realized yet, I'm, I'm the French one. And we have two other French speaking residents as well. Nawar and Karen. All right, so I'm going to continue in English. So, on our behalf of my co-residents, we'd like to thank our family for their loving support, our boyfriend and girlfriend for standing by us even through a difficult time. We'd like to thank particularly Dr. Fine, Dr. Papapano, and Dr. Stupel, not only because they were great faculty and mentors, but also because they have the ability to pick amazing residents like myself. <laughs> Dr. Fine, with your sense of humor and your dedication, we are fin finally able to survive the 36 months of labor without side effects. I mean, I'm not talking for now, but. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Papapano, with your Greek Swedish personality, you are always pushing us to achieve a higher level of perfection. Now we can tell you that we appreciate what you did for us. Even so, we didn't seem quite awake during current lead. Thank you, Dr. P. Dr. Supel, your loving and caring personality made us feel like we had a second mother away from home. You were always there for us, and we were blessed to have such a mentor in our life. A wise philosopher once said, at the end of the day, the strength of this program as a resident. And Dr. Fine was right because, believe me, those people are amazing. They're really on top of the game, 
And they not only just create periodontists, of course, they are more importantly, they are great people. During those three years, I've not only met colleagues, also met friends, and even more, I found twins, almost sister. Thank you guys for those three years. Thank you for being there. We'd like also to thank our co-resident from the other department. Not only we were colleagues, but we were also partner in crime. And we will miss you and wish you the best for your future career. Congratulations, guys. Uh, we'd like also to thank our faculty for inspiring and guiding us through this adventure. We are lucky to be surrounded by such great periodontists and they very great model for our future uh, career. So I, won't, I hope I won't forget any name. Uh, but we'd like to thank Dr. Schillag, Rosman, Tano, Wes, Connolly, Lala, Siegel, Savin, Karsh, Pittman, Matthews, Schultes, Pater, Bolden, Nieselsen, Kim, and Ken Kimura, Dr. Hoof, Dr. Garbik, and Dr. Schwartz. Of course, we won't forget Elena Schwartz, our hygienist. She's doing an amazing job, and she was treating us like we were her own daughter and uh, son. We would like also to thank the supportive staff, which without them we would be totally lost. Gianne, I don't know if he's here. Of, of course. Thank you for being this eccentric person that you are and entertaining us during our period events. Thank you for being yourself. Mindegos and Yolanda, I don't know if they're around. You were always available for us, and we appreciate your time and your help. So working with us in the clinic wasn't easy every day, especially with me. So we'd like to thank our assistant, Judy, Sherry, Aris, also Elsa and Shelter, and the assistant from the other department, especially Carrie from Ando. Carrie, thank you. Um, thank you so much for giving us an helping hand. Last but not least, we won't forget the front desk, Yolette and Denise. Uh, you are such sweet, sweet hearts, and thank you so much for your kindness. So more personally, three years ago, I left everything behind me to, to come in this program. For me, it was a dream, and today it's an accomplishment. So it was an incredible experience, and now I'm very proud to be here in front of you and to be next to my new family, the Perio Columbia family. So I guess right now we have to start our life. It's just the beginning. And I just have to say, congratulations, class of 2010. We did it. Okay. The next program is Masters of Science in Prosthodontics. Their program uh, director, Dr. Shelby White, and I, with Dr. Hauser, we would always teach a course at 8 in the morning on Wednesday morning. Uh, Shelby used to think the course was at age 15, but I really love Shelby. Come on up. Well, <clears throat> I would like to congratulate all the graduates this year. And also, I'd like to gr congratulate the parents. You should be very proud of all of your, uh, your children, sons and daughters, who are finishing this program. Uh, recently, um, John Wooden uh, passed away, um, and there are some expressions that he left with us, and one of them was success. And he judged success uh, by how hard a person worked to enable themselves to be the best they could be. I look at not only my residents in prosthodontics, I look at all the residents in this uh, school. And I think that all of you are truly successful within these four years, three years. I always say four years, I'm sorry. Um, my residents are like family to me. Uh, the hardest thing, and like I said last year, was I, I always keep thinking their last name is White. <laughs> but, so I have to, you know, uh, make sure that I pronounce their last names correctly. But I'm really not sorry that they're, they're leaving. I know they're going to be 
doing fantastic things as they proved throughout the three years they were here. So I'd like to uh, bring my four residents uh, to uh, uh, the stage right now. I'd like to start off with uh, Nicole Mackey, who are our emotional member of our, and, talented, and very talented member of our, of our graduating group. I'd like to bring up Jay Peck, who uh, brought me through all of Korea last year. Vasiniki uh, uh, Rapapulo. Uh, and my youngest son, uh, Young Sean. <laughs> Again, I'm proud of all of you, and I'm looking for great things like I know you are. You're all successes. Thank you very much for the three years you've given me. Hello everyone. On behalf of my class, we would like to thank our parents for supporting our challenges and celebrating our successes. To our Columbia faculty, you allowed us to set standards that exceeded the bar. You encouraged us, promoted us, and set Herculean expectations. These expectations have created us to continually seek options and devise treatment plans in the best interest of our patients' health. Thank you to Columbia University for promoting our residents to excel and be lifelong learners. We would like to thank Dr. White, all of our wonderful attendings, Dr. Salentine, all of our professors who have been so instrumental in our education. Our staff, Yolette, Delia, Millie, all the front desk, all the assistants, and every other personnel who has facilitated and helped us for the past three years. We would like to thank our colleagues in perio, oral surgery, endo, and ortho for working together and learning how to be a team. For this, we will continue to network, serve others in the realms of education, health, business, and charity, and always remain humble and dignified. To everyone, we are appreciative for all that you have done and look forward to the future as we remain a part of the Columbia University College of Dental Medicine family. Thank you. On the uh, tombstone of probably one of the world's greatest entertainers has written the phrase, the best is yet to come. So now we have Dr. Phil Terman in the AGD program. Good morning and welcome to all the families who've traveled from all over the world, literally all over the world, to be here today share in the success of this wonderful AGD program, which in itself is probably the finest and best that we've had to date. And I want to salute all of you, as well as all the other graduates. We also, the theme was very nicely set by Dr. Fine today about diversity and the uh, numbers of people that are from every place in the world and how all this diversity gets together and how, in fact, 
they work together so well. And I've often wondered about the significance of much of that. Uh, and so I had some other remarks, but it, it shook me off a bit and think about how every, all these people get along so well. You know, in our little microcosm of uh, the world, we've got 17 or 18 different languages. Six of them are spoken by Lena. But in the world, there are uh, 6,809 different languages. In Europe, there are some 230 different languages spoken. In South Asia and Indochina, Indonesia, there are 2,100 and some languages spoken. In Queens, there's another micro, there are 138 different languages spoken. And that's among several million people. In Papua New Guinea, a population of four million people speaks 832 different languages. So how, in fact, can this be melded into groups like this, which provide a synergy to take care of people so well, give a sense of dedication to their work, work constantly, and honor everything that we stand for here at Columbia University and this wonderful uh, uh, group of, of uh, professors and doctors. How does this all happen? Well, it starts someplace in a very interesting uh, thing that I just thought of before, which was my old friend Frank Sinatra made a, wrote a song, or sang a song many years ago, The House We Live In. And the house we live in, the essence of which is the willingness to be together, the willingness to share, and common goals, putting aside racial language and everything else. So I want to congratulate all of you on having accomplished that so magnificently in this wonderful university. Uh, there are too many of you to say too much about everybody, but another theme that Dr. Fine did uh, mention was the acknowledgement of our staff, and our staff starting with my colleague, Dr. Boyle. Uh, Iris Serino, Maria Polino, Gloria Ortiz, Elizabeth Vargas, Julian Citron, Jackie Gonzalez, Mildred Jenkins, Kathleen Torres Griffin, Jeanette Moya, Vanessa Labodi, and Carmen Montalvo. So thank you very much. There are lots of people in the AGT program. I have lots to say about each one of you. But there's a uh, uh, compelling, imperious note that I got from Dr. Fine and Dr. Lichtenthal. Be brief. <laughs> I'm never brief, but I won't say too much about anybody. But I'm going to announce your names, and please come up here as we fill the stage and leave room to somebody else. Thank you. So Dr. Ahmed Bilal, Dr. Corey Darling, Dr. Asma al Kassam, Dr. Kathy Gusita, Dr. Min Young Kim, Dr. Yung Ha Ko, Dr. Lauren Kirpis Welch, Dr. Min Kwak, Dr. Nud Malik, Dr. Kenya Martinez, Dr. Jatin Kumar Nolori, Dr. Francis O, Dr. Neil Patel, Dr. Divya Reddy Sankapali, Dr. Alphonse Sigon, Dr. Pubi of Silfa, Dr. Tanvir Singh, Dr. Violeta Esquivas, Dr. Shreta Soni, Dr. Lucy Tsang, and part JGD2, Dr. Hanin Ayasan, Dr. Mohammed Arafa, Dr. Bawa, Dr. Lina Sharma, Dr. Karim Deep Singh. Thank you. Here they are. Tom? Tom. Dr. Boyle, please come up stage.
Alright, I'll introduce you. Hi everybody. Um, as many of you know, I don't need a uh, microphone. I, my voice is very loud. They can be here all the way in the eighth floor by now. Um, I'd like to introduce my uh, uh, my senior resident, Lena Sharma. She's gonna have a brief speech. I don't know, it's like 15 pages. So um, chill out and we'll, hopefully we'll be done by, uh, uh, by dinner time. So. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start with um, something in Latin. I did try to figure out how to say it, but I, I do apologize if I don't say it cor correctly. In lumen tu vida benes lumen. I'll translate that. In thy light, we shall see light. That is the Latin motto of Columbia University. On behalf of the graduating class of 2010, I want to take this opportunity to sincerely thank those people who have provided the light of good guidance and mentorship to us during our time here at Columbia and have made our stay at Columbia educational and memorable. <coughs> Dean Lamster, Associate Dean Fine, Dr. Salentine, Dr. Littenthal, Dr. Terman, Dr. Boyle, distinguished guests, parents and family, and of course my classmates the AGD postgraduates of Columbia School of Dental Medicine, and all fellows of the other postgraduate programs. It is my honor to speak to you today as a proud member of the Columbia University Class of 2010. Commencement appears on our university calendar once a year, every year. This event appears on the life calendar of a graduate only once. So be proud, as today represents a lifetime of achievement. Today we can gaze upon the future with hope as faculty, family, and friends celebrate the graduates seated here today. I would like to take you back to a year ago when we were all nervously interviewing with Dr. Terman and Dr. Lippenthal. The interview was a time we have all discussed many a time in the lounge and have all reached the same consensus that Dr. Terman was one of the most relaxing interviews we have had. I recall my interview. As I passed the post office, I took a deep breath and tried to gather my composure before my dental interview. I entered a brick building and politely asked the uniformed guard, excuse me, sir, could you please tell me where the Office of Dental Education is? The guard looked at me for a very long few seconds and said, dear, this is not the dental school, this is the Armory Historic Center. <laughs> Embarrassed, I approached what I passed along the way and previously thought was the post office and realized that it was the Columbia School of Dental Medicine. In spite of my mistake, it did not take me very long to realize that CUSDM was truly an exceptional place. My classmates and I are privileged to receive a balanced education in an intimate and collaborative environment. The kind and hardworking people in the AGD program were, in my opinion, the greatest assets, faculty and administration. Dr. Terman, also known as Dr. T, who gave us all the opportunity to learn at one of the most exciting venues and was always av available to push our knowledge, ability, and self-belief one step further. Dr. T's lessons are definitely timeless and strong, especially his advice on be committed but not attached. Unfortunately, Dr. T, I have to sadly say that today I disagree with you. I am committed, but I am attached also. Dr. Boyle, also known as Dr. B, who brings a passion for dentistry and for teaching every single day of the week. We thank you so much, Dr. Boyle. Oh, there you are. Jackie Gonzalez, our diligent floor manager, who has resolved more conflicts than the head of the UN. The best group of assistants in any hospital anywhere including Elizabeth, Julie, Maria, and Gladys, and our administrative whizzes, Kathleen, Janet, Vanessa, Mildred, and Natasha. You are the true backbone of our AGD. <coughs> Classmates, we bring to you this moment a variety of emotions. We arrive at this day with pride, joy, uncertainty, and sheer terror as we think of the combined colossus of financial debt that we represent. However, today we present a commencement in the highest of spirits, ready to take part in one of the most exhilarating achievements of our life. 
We gather to pay tribute to our supporters and to our own toils that span over two decades. We also look to the opportunity that tomorrow will bring and ask ourselves what we will bring to tomorrow. As we take the next step in our lives after AGD, I hope all of us will carry with us the confidence of our rigorous education and the memories of our wonderful companionship and shared, shared experiences. Today is a triumph of the staggering battles of the graduate that have been overcome to achieve this great goal. These battles unite us today, and I hope they will unite us for a lifetime, not only to each other, but also as the alumni of Columbia University School of Dental Medicine. As we rise up to meet the, the great challenges of our time, let us do it with a smile, and I am confident that the world will return the favor. Congratulations and thank you. We're now to the certificate in the general practice residency program. Uh, Dr. Greg Bunzer, I know his residents uh, truly love, unfortunately can't be here this morning, so Dr. Sidney Isaac will um, present the certificates. Well, good morning. Uh, first, I want to uh, congratulate all the graduates um, on finishing up their residency programs and postdoctoral programs here at Columbia and at the hospital. I know that it was a long, arduous uh, path, but a path well uh, taken. I'm going to call first, we're first going to talk about the general practice residents. Um, the general practice residents are, I think, the unsung heroes of the hospital dental service. The general practice uh, residency here is very difficult. Um, I'm sure that not a single resident who was finishing the program uh, in the next two weeks thought that on July 1st when they arrived they'd be taken care of a di an uncontrolled diabetic uh, intubated on a ventilator with severe head and neck infections in the surgical ICU at the hospital. And that was just the start of their year. Um, and uh, that may have been one of the more healthier patients they dealt with last summer. Um, the general practice residents uh, are rarely seen on the eighth floor because when, after they take call in the hospital, they have to go home due to the 80-hour uh, the work week and the 24 plus 6 uh, hour rules that all residency programs must abide by. Uh, their day began, if they're on call, it would begin, well, it would end at morning rounds, but uh, they always pre-rounded at 6 in the morning to make sure all was well with our patients, and they were frequently up all night taking care of uh, calls in the emergency room and, uh, in, and for taking care of our inpatients. And so I want to call them up. Uh, Dr. Layla Saad, who uh, can't be here today, I think she must be post-call, um, <laughs> but uh, Dr. Layla Saad is not here today. She's going to be going into private practice, uh, I think back up, perhaps back up in Montreal. Uh, Dr. Mahar Jandali, who uh, was actually our second year resident um, and who really served as an oral surgery intern and really kept the uh, clinic together in the second half of the year when our first year oral surgery residents went off to medical school. Um, he'll be joining us as an oral surgery resident uh, come uh, July 1. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Ann uh, Mitsumoto, um, who uh, was just always pleasant. Uh, nothing, nothing bothered her in the least. She always had that great smile on her face. You know, the patient could be crashing and she'd have that smile on her face. <laughs> Don't worry, everything will be well. Uh, Anne will be doing pediatric dentistry up at St. Barnabas uh, in the Bronx. Uh, Dr. Libertad Negron, who came to us from the University of Puerto Rico, 
Uh, also, I, I think, came away with a deep understanding of the relationship between uh, medicine and dentistry. I believe she's starting an endo program out in California. And uh, last but not least, uh, Columbia's own Dr. Pariya Shaheen. <laughs> who uh, uh, has his way of doing things. <laughs> and <laughs> many times he was right. Um, and I, I think he really helped the general practice residents uh, get acclimated when they began the program in the summer. And I want to offer him congratulations as well. make this quick, precise, like the way you usually work on a daily basis. Um, this year has been tremendously um, good for us. Uh, we gain a lot of experience in the hospital doing uh, medical rotations such as anesthesia, emergency department rotation, and uh, treat, taking care of uh, all dental needs of all hospitalized patients on all the floors of this huge hospital gave us great confidence in treating medically compromised patients. Um, it was a tough year. I would like to make special thanks to Dr. Banza, who is uh, very supportive to, uh, to us, and our chairman, Dr. Isaac, who's also very always available for us and, uh, and uh, provide uh, full dedication of his time to his residents. Um, it was a great pleasure also to work with uh, my GPR co-residents. They always worked hard and uh, helped out in, uh, in uh, everyday um, uh, patients, uh, patients' care. Um, also, special thank you to uh, supporting staff and all faculty. Congrats, and uh, thank you for all the help from all other graduating residents from other programs. Thank you. Now we come to the certificate in pediatric dentistry. If you, if you had to design the ideal program director for pediatric dentistry, I'm sure it would be Dr. Richard Yu. Come on up. Thanks very much, Dr. Fine. Good morning. I'm excited to be here because we have a wonderful group of graduates to present to you. If I could have our graduates up here on stage. Please. Thank you. In several weeks, these folks will no longer reside here but begin a career as a specialist in the age-defined field where they see all children from infancy to adolescence as well as persons with special health care needs. Equipped with a continuum of approaches to care from behavior guidance in an office setting to care in a hospital setting. This group is composed of individuals who have demonstrated a track record of engagement with the university and its hospital. Please take a look at them as I highlight for you some of their activities during their time here scientific abstract presentations at our national uh, annual session in Chicago, research presentations at our national leadership conference in Seattle. Over 12,000 children cared for this past year. Active participation in university-sponsored direct care externships abroad to rural Jamaica, Dominican Republic, Cambodia, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. 
peer and editor reviewed journal publications, managing night call, inpatient consults, hospital rotators in emergency, anesthesia, and medicine, plus university rotators. Friends, there has been a tremendous amount of activity over the last 23 months, and I have had the privilege of watching them mature from students with concerns at the levels of the mouth to students with concerns at the levels of the child, the family, and the community. Embedded now with that so-called Columbia RNA of being engaged problem solvers and asking that single question of what can we do about it. So colleagues, friends, family, here they are. Would you step forward as I call out your name? Graduate of Boston School, Dr. Delny Acosta. <laughs> Graduate of our college, Dr. Hannah Ahn. <laughs> Graduate of NYU School and Chief this past year, Dr. Aura Caldera. Graduate of our college, Dr. Shilpa Chandiwal. And graduate of UPenn School, Dr. Su Huang. We are grateful to them for all that they have done to strengthen this program. We are confident that we leave them in a strong position as they transition into their new careers. We remain hopeful that they would stay in touch and find effective means of engagement now as alumna. And we are proud, not only of their individual accomplishments, but on how they've maintained composure and grace throughout this rigorous process. And although we remain students throughout our professional lives, I believe that it is unmistakably clear that something very special and memorable has occurred right here. Thank you, and congratulations. If I could have Dr. Stephen Chesed, Division Director, join me in congratulating and delivering the Jillian certificates. I promise I will be brief. Um, I just want to extend a very, very, very gracious thank you to our assistants, our administrators, very much appreciated. Dr. Yoon and Dr. Chesed, thank you very much for giving us you know, the skill set that we need to embark on this next chapter of our lives. Your mentorship, your guidance in the past few years is, we're just so, we're so happy. Um, I thought a lot about what message I wanted to give today. And I thought about my journey over the past six years, four years of dental school, two years of postgraduate training. And I was thinking about how my definition of success has evolved. Um, and what I realize now is that success is to have meaning and purpose in your life. It's to live your life with integrity, to be honest, not to be something that you're not, and to give back to society in some way. And it's my belief that with professional accomplishment comes social responsibility. And so I'm very honored to stand up here representing all these women who have demonstrated their commitment to serving and working with the underserved pediatric population. And I want to leave you with a quote that I heard once that I, it got me thinking. And the quote was from a famous playwright called Susie Laurie Parks who said to always entertain your far out ideas. And anyone who's worked, has seen us work with our pediatric population or who works with children knows the lengths that we have to go through to entertain our patients and to get them to trust us and have confidence in us with their families. Um, so always remember to entertain those far out ideas. <laughs> Thank you.
As, as Dean Munger uh, had said about Dean Lamster, that, that he's, a, he's, he's a dean of, of vision, and one of his charges also is, is that all these programs not only maintain the highest level of quality, but they continue to be innovative. They, they continue to push the envelope and expand. And our next program, Certificate in Oral Pathology, Dr. Zagarelli, who's the director now, has actually changed that program actually to have an MD component to keep on elevating the quality of that program. Dr. Zagarelli? Last week, while seeing patients with Dr. Rotoma, our graduating resident, she reminded me that today was graduation day. And uh, she said to me, you know, she said, you have to say something about me, and I have to say something about you. <laughs> then she said that her remarks followed mine. And she wanted to know, she said, what are you going to say about me? I said then, without a doubt, that you're very pretty and you're very smart, no question about it. And she said that she would say then that I was brilliant and handsome. Well, I'll be waiting over there in the chair to <laughs> see if I get that response. Regardless, we were very fortunate to have recruited a Dr. Rotoma. Dr. Rotoma was a very successful clinical general dentist in Washington State, 3,000 miles away. She had a very successful practice with a lot of dental implants, a great deal simply of success. She had a passion, though, for pathology. And she sold her practice, packed her things in a pickup truck, and drove 3,000 miles to be our resident here. And it's no easy task to do that when you graduated from dental school back in the 1990s, that's not too far ago, and then to enter into a specialty that is truly bookish. You read a lot, and you practice a lot with the microscope and gross tissues, et cetera. Heavy duty reading. And she was very, very successful, and she's ready to sign out cases now. For her future, I noticed a couple weeks ago that her hair got a little shorter because she's going into the United States military. She will be going into the Army in a few weeks and she will be inducted as a major in the Army and she will be situated in a remote area at least 2,000 miles away from the nearest oral pathologist. She'll be there for three years on some island called Hawaii. Uh, so I think she'll have a good time and she'll have a great career ahead of her. Rochelle? I think he outdid me. Dr. Z, you are truly brilliant and the most handsome mentor anybody could ever have. Um, I'm just now realizing how much more fun I could have had if I, if I had a co-resident. But um, thankfully for you, that means I'll keep this short. I don't really know what possessed me to give it all up after 10 years of practice. I had a beautiful house on the water, which I rented out, so I still have it. Um, I put my motorcycles in storage. And I trucked it out here and hoped for the best. On my first day, when I had the, um, the wonderful experience and thrill of performing our first autopsy, I know I was in for quite a ride, and I'm so glad I did it. So it's kind of cold in here, and I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> but um, my learning experience here has been phenomenal. I spent the last three years grossing all kinds of organs, you couldn't possibly imagine a dentist touching. 
and studying them for disease and pathology. I took biopsies on patients. Nobody ever saw me, I know. Um, I taught some AGD students at one point, but I did a lot of really fun things. And I'm really, really glad for the experience. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Z for allowing me such a, an exciting educational adventure. Dr. Yoon and Philippone for all of your encouragement and support. The wonderful ladies of the clinic, Jackie, Kathy, I don't know where you all are, Janet, um, Gladys, Norris, I don't know if she's still with us, but um, everybody was just so wonderful. You always made my experiences so pleasant. My parents for supporting me through every adventure the past nameless number of years, countless number of years. And um, to all of you who are graduating, most of you have never met. You have a great, great, great future ahead of you. And if I had such a wonderful, bright future as a general dentist for a long time, just imagine how wonderful yours is going to be now. So thank you. Every year I'm asked, Dr. Lichtenthal, how do I pick the date when we're going to have graduation? And I say simply what we have to do is we got to call the next program director and ask, what's his OR schedule for the month? Uh, Dr. Sidney Isaac is here to present the certificates in oral maxillofacial surgery. That's actually true. Um, so it gives me a great pleasure to introduce uh, the two graduates from the oral and maxillofacial surgery combined medical degree program at New York Presbyterian Hospital and Columbia University uh, Medical Center. Um, you know, it was seven years ago that they were in dental school. Uh, Yuko was at uh, Case Western and Mogda was at USC. They were getting their applications ready and they were wondering, and they probably couldn't wait for the interview season to begin because they'd be traveling uh, far and wide and spending a lot of money uh, to go on their interviews. And uh, I think, did you guys interview on the same day? On separate days. So I, it's, it's rare that, it's very uncommon for me to remember interviews. They have to be very, very poor interview or something very unusual. So uh, Magda came in and she exhibited such self-confidence without arrogance that we just knew that here was someone who was special. And Yuko came in. Now, Yuko, who was very quiet and a bit shy, uh, she has a black belt in something. I have a yellow streak. She has a black belt. <laughs> and she volunteered to do 1,000 push-ups during the interview. And then she volunteered to take on Tom Wilson, who was also a black belt, but Tom also played fullback for Boston College, in, and she offered to, to whip his butt. <laughs> and we say, you know, we looked at ourselves when she left, we said, well, I think we have two people we're going to put high in the match. And so it's now six years later, the program is finished, and the oral and maxillofacial surgery program is not an easy program. Uh, they spend a year on service, on the oral surgery service, and then they go off to medical school here at Columbia, which is, this is not an easy medical school. They have to complete essentially three years of medical school in two years, which means they get no vacation. And while they're going to classes, they arrange some of their fourth year electives for the afternoons and the weekends to get things done. And then they become general surgery residents for, the, for a year, and in general surgery, they are a general surgery resident. They'll be on the cardiac service, the transplant service. Uh, their day doesn't begin and doesn't end. It's one continuous uh, wakeful hour, which goes on for 24 plus hours. Uh, they have to, they'll pre-round on their patients uh, at three in the morning. Their rounds may begin at five in the morning with their senior residents. Um, it is a long, very, very difficult year. Um, and then they come back for two years thinking they could have a vacation uh, on oral and maxillofacial surgery. Um, and, and it isn't a vacation. You know, our program is a difficult program. It's a demanding program. And, you know, I've watched uh, these two women uh, grow over the past six years, and I am very proud of them. So let me, let me bring them up. Uh, Yuko Nakamura. 
and, and mug the pet white hand. The other way, Yuko. <laughs> you know, they've also, while they're coming up, they've, they have both spent time on international uh, missions. They have been to Jamaica, the Dominican Republic. Uh, they've been on cleft trips with uh, myself and Vinnie Correo to uh, Nicaragua and uh, recently to Colombia, South America. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for being here and sharing this day with us. So I would just like to start out um, with a description of my co-resident, Yuko and I, as we began our residency. And I'm going to do it in soap format. So we have a 20-something-year-old girl, otherwise healthy, Present, presenting for her first day of residency training in oral and maxillofacial surgery. She's a bit nervous and she's completely clueless. She, um, she has no meds or she takes no meds and she has no allergies. Her review of systems is significant for heart palpitations and mild abdominal discomfort. So on exam, we see a well-developed, well-nourished young lady she appears anxious and she's diaphoretic. Her uh, head and neck exam is um, normocephalic and atraumatic. Her chest is clear. Her heart is regular rate and tachycardic. And her abdomen is soft, non-tender, and non-distended with hyperactive bowel sounds. Her extremities are warm and well perfused with tremors in her upper extremities. So now, fast forward to six years later, the resident, who is now 30-something, presents for her graduation day. She's no longer anxious, and she's much more confident. She has made it through six years of training, including two internships, one in general surgery, and she's made it through med school. There have been no other changes in her medical history, and she has um, no other changes in her review of systems. This time on her exam, she appears emaciated <laughs> with sallow skin and dark circles under her eyes. She has no wrinkles still, thank you Botox. Her heart is regular rate and rhythm. Her chest is clear, but she shows a new growth of chest hair. Her abdomen is soft, non-tender, and non-distended with normoactive bowel sounds. Her extremities are warm and well perfused with calluses on the palmar surfaces of her hands. And her labs are significant for an elevated level of testosterone. So in assessment, we have a 30-something-year-old oral maxillofacial surgeon who's presenting here for her graduation. She's a little worse for wear, but very, very happy to be here. She's made some mistakes along the way, but she's learned from these mistakes. And she's also done quite a few things right as well. She hopes to use the knowledge and the skills attained in her residency training to better the lives of her patients. And her plan is now to go out into the world to start a practice and hopefully make a big difference in the lives of the patients that she treats. So in closing, I would like to say a few thank yous. I want to thank all the people who have made all of this possible for the both of us. First off, of course, our chairman, Dr. Isaac. Thank you. Thank you for all of the wonderful educational opportunities you've given us, all the wonderful trips to Colombia and Nicaragua, Guatemala, Jamaica. And thank you for your, your surgical guidance. Also, thank you for putting up with two standing stools in the OR. There's quite a big height difference there. Thank you to Dr. Correo for all your support. 
Dr. Joel Friedman, Dr. Holtzman, Dr. Mandel, Dr. Levy, Dr. Terman, and Dr. Philippone, and all the rest of our clinic attendings. I would also like to thank our assistants, um, in particular Estella, who um, will be leaving us this year. We love her very much. Um, thank you to Takesha for orchestrating our lives for the past six years. And finally, thank you to my mom and to my dad, my brothers and my sister, for all your love and support. And thank you, Yuko, my co-resident, who's been here with me for six long years. Thank you all. I just want to also add my husband, sorry, for supporting me and my family. And of course, um, with Mugda, it was an interesting six years. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and also for the hospital staff who sat here for taking care of our patients and in the operating room as well. Thank you. Thank you. Also, under the Dean's guidance, as, we, as time goes on, we're actually going to be adding more postdoc programs. So this ceremony is going to get longer and longer and longer. Look at Dr. Gerwig uh, on this. Uh, but that completes the certificate and, and master's part of the program. Now I'm going to bring up the Vice Dean for Academic Affairs, Dr. Salentine. These are closing remarks, and they will also be brief. I would like to add my congratulations to all of you on this really special day. The graduates, most of you, have now completed their formal education. There's not much more that we can teach you in a formal curriculum. From this point forward, you will be on your own. You will, in fact, uh, direct your own education uh, as you are uh, going to do your independent learning and setting out your own continuing education programs. We hope that many of those continuing education programs will be with us so that we can see you and see how things are happening and how you're doing in your lives. Uh, also, we, we, you know, we kind of tie a little rope on you. We kind of every now and then like to pull you in. So uh, continuing education programs is uh, going to be something that we look forward to uh, as you come back to us. A life full of promise really lays ahead of you. You have the basic preparation to become the very best in your field. And we all look forward uh, to your success in your respective specialties. And then comes the second part of that little rope that we have tied onto you. We hope that in your future years, you will share your expertise with the new generations of students that are going to be in our programs. And if you're in New York City, we hope you will be with us, okay? Now, that kind of leads directly into the next part of what I'm going to say, uh, because one of my really pleasant duties is to uh, um, make an award, the former COLA Award for Excellence in Teaching. It has become customary at this ceremony to honor one of the members of the volunteer faculty who contributes so much to our postdoctoral programs. You may have heard their names uh, being mentioned as, as various thank, you, thank yous were made. Any educational program depends to a significant extent on the excellence of its teachers. In our programs, we are blessed by having a group of master clinicians who as volunteers generous, generously share not only their time, but more importantly, their expertise with our residents and students. Some years ago, we established the Formacola Award for Excellence in Teaching. The award is named after Dr. Alan J. Formacola, who led the college as its dean for 23 years. And the recipient of this year's award, I would like to ask him to come up, is Dr. Erwin Levy. <laughs> So I'm going to say all the nice things about him right now, okay? 
Uh, Dr. Levy has been uh, taking advantage of, of the various boroughs that New York City offers. He uh, had his, uh, received his BA degree from Queens College in Flushing, New York. He received his DDS degree from New York University College of Dentistry. Then he completed a one-year residency in anesthesiology in, at Maimonides Medical Center in Brooklyn. Then he went on to complete his residency in oral maxillofacial surgery at Metropolitan Hospital Center in New York. And between 1983 and 1989, he co-directed the oral surgery training program at the Jacobi Hospital in the Bronx. The only thing that he didn't do was go to Staten Island. I don't know why. Uh, Dr. Levy is one of those few private practitioners who has dedicated himself to resident education. For many years, while maintaining a private practice, he co-directed the Jacobi residency program until it merged with the Montefiore Medical Center. Irwin has been on the staff, we now call him Irwin, now he's at Columbia. Uh, he has been on the staff at Columbia for about six years and he helps instill in the residents and dental students the importance of lifelong learning by example and evidence-based practice. He has been the force behind the growth in the implant reconstruction uh, effort of the division and he attends clinic every Wednesday. This is quite a commitment. And the final statement, which I, I was, as I was gathering uh, the statements that made Dr. Levy so very special, this one I loved best of all. His quiet, calm manner in our very busy clinic is like the eye of a hurricane. And I thought that was a beautiful description that, uh, that I think says it all. So I am proud and honored to present this year's former COLA Award for Excellence in Teaching to Dr. Irwin Levy. Two final things. Um, you, you really can't have uh, an event like this go, I think, a, as smooth as it goes every single year without several individuals actually behind the scenes working real hard to do this. And that starts with Melissa Welch in the back there and her assistant Alex Forstein in the back and also uh, Yolanda Lantiga and Elsa Solis from the Dean's Office. Now. For us up here it ends, but for all of you now, we have another party waiting. And it's across the street at 50 uh, Haven in Bard Hall. There'll be a celebration now for all of you to go ahead and attend, which basically starts in five minutes. So I thank you all for coming this morning and wish you all well. Your trip home.